So today we are going to do a flow that's designed for runners, but really it's for anyone that wants a really good stretch. So get into the hips, get into the hamstrings. Obviously when you're running a lot, you can tend to have tight hip flexors, you can tend to have tight hamstrings, but it's also a similar kind of occurrence in people that might sit down a lot or maybe drive for a living. Anyhow, it's just a really nice stretch, concentrating more on the lower body. So if you are really tight, if you have tight hips, tight hamstrings, then you might want to grab yourself a block or two, because um, we might use them throughout the flow. So it's going to be about a 30 minute flow. Um, so it's just really nice, really slow, really steady. So just come in to sit in a comfortable seated position just to start. So this is where you might want to grab your block and just place it under your bottom just to really lift your hips up. So you want to just very slightly rotate that pelvis. So sitting up nice and tall. Stacking the shoulders on top of the hips. Just reaching the crown of the head up and just taking the hands either to the knees or maybe just collecting them in the lap. I'm just going to sit for a few moments here with the breath. So if you are a runner or just using this for a stretch, maybe not you know, usual regular pra yoga practice, you don't have a regular practice, just use this few moments just to really tune into the body, just to tune into the breath. Staying with a nasal breath throughout. So a deep inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. And if you are a regular yogi or you have a practice, then maybe coming to ujjayi breath. And just taking that little constriction in the back of the throat as we start to move through the practice wherever you are and whoever you are and just taking a few moments here just to breathe and just maybe taking a scan of the body just checking in from where you are today noticing if there's any parts that might feel open maybe any parts that might feel a little bit tense or a little bit tight so just acknowledging and then just moving on without any judgment. Just feeling the shoulders softly rise and fall as you breathe. Just if you feel the mind wandering at all just coming back to the breath, so just bringing the attention back to the breath. And then just slowly start to take some circles with the neck, so tilting the chin down to the chest, slowly taking it over to the shoulder and then tipping it back. Just taking some slow circles, starting to warm into the body. Just noticing if it feels good to stop at any point, maybe just linger there. And just noticing if there's any tension that you're carrying in the shoulders or the neck, just relax, just release. And you're just taking the head back the other way. And maybe stopping to pause if it feels good. And then just carrying on. Just noting that it might feel different on this side. And then coming back to centre. Slowly blinking the eyes open. And then just taking the legs out into a straddle position. So just to start to open out the hips, 
So we want to externally rotate the thighs. So think about just opening up the hips and twisting the thighs backwards. Again, sitting up nice and tall. So being careful not to slouch into the shoulders. Sitting up nice and tall. If this is enough for you, so if you're feeling a stretch already in the hips, just come here, rotating those thighs. Maybe taking the hands just down onto the legs. Or maybe if you're slightly more open in the hips, and start to walk the hands forward. So again, be careful not to bring the thighs in, but taking them outwards, and then just keeping the spine nice and long, just taking the hands forward just as much as you wish, as much as you need. Placing the forearms down. If you go a bit further, maybe placing the head into the hands. Again, all and all the time thinking about rotating those thighs. So we're really opening up the hips here. Also feeling a nice stretch in the outer glute. a stretch out, just slowly walking them back in and then twisting the upper body over to the right leg. Again staying here if that's enough for you or maybe just gently walking the hands forwards. left hand side and keeping that spine nice and tall, staying here if that's enough or just walking forwards. Just being careful that as you're coming over to the side that the body's not, sorry the leg isn't rolling in. Again so just think about externally rotating. Slowly walking back, coming over into your tabletop position. So just making your way over and to all fours. Taking the right leg to the back of the mat and just pressing the heel down towards the floor. Good. And feeling a nice stretch in the calf. Trying to keep the hips as square as possible. So trying not to rotate through the hips at all. So really pressing that heel down towards the floor. You should feel really good. Half. A nice even weight between both of the hands. And then picking up that right leg. Pointing the toe and then flexing the toe. Pointing and flexing. Pointing and flexing. One more. And flexing good, taking it over to the other side. So this time reaching the left leg back and then pressing that heel down towards the mat, towards the back. Again, this should feel really good. Those hips nice and square. And then reaching the foot out, pointing the toe. And then again flexing. Pointing. Flex. Point two more. Flex. Um, point if you like me then for clicky ankles. Getting rid of all those, those pops, those clicks. Coming back down. And then tucking the toes, we're going to make our way into our downward facing dog. So just gently and slowly start to lift the knees. And keeping the knees nice and soft at this point. So really lengthening through the spine. Thinking about one line of energy from the crown of the head all the way up the spine, up the back. And coming out of the hips. 
So staying here with the knees bent, if that's enough for you. If you have straight legs available to you, then just gently starting to settle in. So only straightening the legs if it's not compromising this nice long spine and these nice high hips. If you need to keep the knees bent, the heels lifted at all time, that's absolutely fine. And then just gently starting to pedal into the feet. So lifting one heel and then another, just really slowly. Put some movement, maybe twisting into the hips a little bit. Whatever works for you, whatever feels good. It should feel really good on the hips. And on the hamstrings, maybe nodding and shaking the head as well if that feels good. Just trying to release all the tension, then just finding some stillness. Wherever you are, taking three breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. And next inhale, sweeping the right leg up straight to the sky, really opening out the hip, and then bending at the knee. Kind of stack the right hip on top of the left. Maybe taking the gaze under the right armpit. Really stretching out that right hip. Pressing into both hands and really pressing the left heel down towards the earth. One more inhale. And as you exhale, straightening the right leg and then sweeping it through to the hands. Coming down into your runner's lunge or into your low lunge. Stacking the right knee above the right ankle, taking the hands to the hips if that's enough. Maybe for finding two blocks if you're really struggling to keep the chest lifted, taking two blocks to either side, or maybe taking the hands, pressing it in to the right knee, really starting to feel the left hip opening. This should feel really, really good. It's a really juicy, yummy stretch for those hips those thighs. Again, pressing down. Keeping that chest nice and long, nice and lifted. Tucking the tailbone under. And then bringing the hands Framing the right foot slowly, starting to straighten out the right leg, shift the weight back. Flexing the right toes, just keeping the chest lifted. Walking the hands back if you need to. If you need to keep that knee very slightly soft, then that's absolutely fine. Again, we're straightening out, stretching out this hamstring, keeping the chest lifted, keeping the spine long. opening the hamstring, maybe taking the hands forward and maybe taking the chest down towards the thigh, towards the knee. Again, just working with your body, not forcing, just without judgment. And bending back into that front knee, we're just going to heel toe the right foot to the outer edge of the mat, coming into our lizard pose. So staying on the hands here, if that's enough. Or it's available, maybe coming down onto the forearms, just bowing the head slightly. This time we're feeling a really nice stretch here on the right hamstring, also still on the left hip. So staying here if that's good, if that's enough. Or maybe taking the right hand to the inside of the right knee, taking the gaze up to the sky, coming onto the outer edge of the right foot, just opening that right hip gently. Breathing into those hips, into those hamstrings. One more breath. Back. 
So then to take in the left hand to the inside of the right foot, twisting the right arm up towards the sky, maybe tucking the toes in the left foot and lifting that left knee, coming into our twisted lunge. Inhale. Exhale, good. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, floating that right hand down, framing the right foot, stepping back into our plank pose. So engaging the glutes. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, coming back into our downward facing dog. Three breaths here, inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale. And then inhaling, floating the left leg up this time, pointing the toe and then bending the knee. We're going to stack that left hip on top of the right, maybe taking the gaze out into the left arm here. Really pressing into that left hand and pressing the right heel down towards the floor. Really feeling that stretch. And then exhale, release. Sweeping the left foot through to the hands, coming up into our low lunge. Over this lunge. Again, maybe taking those blocks either side or pressing the hands down into the left knee. As you press the hands, think about lifting the chest, checking the tailbone. This time, we're really sinking into that right hip, so we're really feeling a nice stretch. It might feel a little bit painful if your hip flexors are really tight, so just taking it as much as you can, again, not forcing, not pushing. So just taking any judgment away, and just taking your body exactly where it is, exactly how it is. Taking one more breath here. And then releasing the hands, slowly straightening into that left leg. Again, just taking it as straight as you can, flexing those toes, keeping the spine nice and long. And we're feeling a stretch in the left hamstring, trying to keep the hips as square as we can. The spine's long. both hands inside of the left foot, coming into our lizard pose, so just heels holding the left foot to the outer edge of the mat, again staying on the hands if that's enough, or maybe coming down onto the forearms, maybe just dropping the head, so really feeling the stretch in the left hamstring into the right hip, there's that choice again to take the left hand to the inside of the left knee, send the gaze up over the left shoulder, and just breathing into that left hip, really feeling a nice stretch. Just taking two more breaths here. And then bringing the right hand to the inside of the left foot. Sweeping the left hand up, again maybe tucking the toes, the legs lifted, so if the right knee's lifted then we're really pressing that heel down towards the floor, engaging the right thigh and really reaching up with the left hand. One more breath, inhale, exhale, floating that left hand back down, left foot meets right into our plank pose. Knowing that you can take it down onto the knees at any point if you need to. If it's too much here on the hands, again, just listening to your body, to what it needs. 
inhale. Exhale, floating back. Downward facing dog, three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. One last inhale. Exhale. Stepping forward with the right foot. We're rising up into our warrior two. So dropping the back heel, circling the hands, rising up warrior two. So really opening out the hips. Inhale. Exhale, one more breath. Inhale. Exhale, women the hands. Stepping the right foot straight back, downward dog. Inhale, step forward, left foot. Dropping the right heel, rising up warrior two. Inhale. Exhale. So really pressing into the outer edge of this right foot. So we're really pressing, rotating again the hip open, keeping the hips open, just guiding out the inside of the left knee. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. From here, we're going to turn the left toes in. So both feet are facing forwards. Taking the hands to the hips, inhale, lift the chest, and then exhale, forward fold. So hinging from the hips, taking the head down towards the floor, releasing the hands, taking our forward fold. Maybe rocking backwards and forwards if that feels good. And then from here, I'm just going to angle the toes out slightly. Bend into the knees, rising up into our goddess pose. So we're really opening the knees out, feeling the hips opening, the thighs opening. So pressing the knees out, hands come out to the side. I'm going to wrap one arm over the other. So either coming palm to palm or back of hand to back of hand, lifting the elbows up, really releasing the shoulders. While you're here, Keeping those knees pressing outwards. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, release the hands. Um, and bringing it back the other way. So crossing opposite arm this time. Again, we're reaching the elbows, but maybe sinking a tiny bit deeper down into those legs. Inhale. Exhale, one more. Stay with me. Inhale. Good. Exhale, release, stretching them out. Straightening up the legs. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, release. Bending into those knees one more time. And then stretching up. Taking the hands to the lower back this time, squeezing the elbows in. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Release the hands. This time we're going to walk the hands over to the left foot, bending into the left knee, coming into our side lunge. So lifting the toes on the right foot, keeping the chest lifted. If this is too much, then maybe keeping the heel left, lifted on the left foot. Maybe sweeping the hand up. And slowly walking over to the right. If this is too much for you at all, then just coming down to here is absolutely fine. But if the hips are open, then coming down, really feeling the stretch. And taking one more on each side. So slowly walking the hands over. Really flexing those toes up. nice gentle forward fold. So again you might want to take the blocks, place it under the knees if it's too much on the hamstrings. If you're ready to just 
get more restorative and kind of collapse at this point, then maybe taking a bolster or a pillow, placing it on the thighs, and then just using this as kind of like your chill out time, your time to really relax. If you're with me, then flexing the toes, giving the legs a nice and straight, you're gonna inhale the hands up, exhale, hinge from the hips. Keeping the spine nice and long. Just taking a couple more breaths here. Gonna bend the knees up, just taking the feet about hip width apart, just taking the hands by the hips, letting the knees knock in and just windscreen wiping them from side to side, letting the hips move as much as they need to, the knees move as much as they need to, just really releasing, closing off the hips. doing this for as long as you need to. If you have got really tight hip flexors, then it might be nice just to hang around here a bit more, so maybe pressing pause and just rocking it up. If not, bringing the soles of the feet to touch, like a book, clasping the hands around the toes, lifting the chest, and then folding. Maybe using the inside of the forearms, the elbows to press down into the calves, just to guide those knees down towards the floor. Again, just taking whatever time you need here. So if you need a little bit longer here, then just taking whatever you need. And so this is just really nice kind of stretch for the legs, even if you're not a runner, but this is just specifically, or not specifically, just really good to stretch out the hips, stretch out the hamstrings, and just picking up the right leg, giving it a hug into the body, just cradling, rocking it from side to side. I really love this one, just for getting into the hips, getting into the glutes. So even if you've just done a workout on the legs, maybe a leg session at the gym, this can just be a really nice way to stretch it out. Uh -huh, and then switching out, taking hold of the other leg, just giving that a rock too. Just bringing the leg and the foot as close as you can to the body, feeling the stretch all the way down the outer hip and the glute. And then when you're ready, just gently making your way down onto your back. Keeping the knees bent, about hip width apart. Just taking a few moments just to rest. It's more comfortable just letting the knees knock in. Taking whatever you need at this point. Just bringing the awareness back to the breath.
And then just staying here for as long as you need. And when you're ready, just bringing the knees into the chest, rocking the forearms around the shins, just rocking from side to side. Keeping the eyes closed, rocking forwards and backwards. So the whole of the length of the spine. And then rocking yourself up to seated. Coming back to that comfortable position that you started with. So still keeping those eyes closed. Bringing the hands into heart center. Just taking a moment just to thank yourself. For taking the time out to listen to your body. To honor your body. Thank you so much for letting me guide you through. I hope you enjoyed that. Namaste. As always, if you enjoyed that, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up, by subscribing, by leaving a comment below. Again, anything you want to see, please let me know over here or over on social media. Until next time.